Mama Blade was the owner and proprietor of the White Lily, one of the dozens of girly bars that make up Binta Block, the sin-sodden red light district of Hua Hin, Thailand. Her nickname came from the big curved blade that was ever present on her belt and her reputation for using it on anyone who fucked with her or her girls. The daughter of a recently deceased mafia boss, she wielded more power than most women in the province. She was feared and respected. And for one weekend, she was my sugar mama. <laughs> or more accurately, I was her bitch. <laughs> I was running from the wreckage of a broken relationship, drinking myself to distraction. Thailand was comfortable, cheap, and warm. I got a job teaching at a rural school in the south and settled into a cycle of perpetual hangovers. I was miserable, but at least I was miserable in paradise. I took a break from my teaching gig to visit my friend DJ, who was doing his MBA on Thailand's underground economy in Hua Hin. He followed prostitutes and money runners for underground gambling rings, tracking how much of their money went back into the legitimate economy versus what got funneled back into the massive underbelly that makes Thailand tick. I knew he was bad news, but I was bored and some trouble sounded like good fun. He invited me for a long weekend. Don't worry, bro. I'll sort everything out. We'll stay at my girl's house. I learned quickly that his girl was a prostitute and her house was the White Lily. Imagine a 1970s wedding went out drinking with a trashy karaoke bar and you'll have a good idea of what most Thai girly bars look like. Inside, it's like a bachelorette party without a bride. Women everywhere wearing tiny dresses and generally running amok. Men flock to fuck flirting and buying the girls bar drinks, thimblefuls of coke and watered-down booze at three times the price of a beer. Once they find a match, they pay the mama-san, basically a female pimp, to either take the girl upstairs or take her out. DJ didn't pay, he babysat. <laughs> Most of the girls had kids that needed to be watched while they went out on day dates with wealthy older clients who couldn't make it out past 10. This was the scene I walked into on the afternoon of my arrival. <laughs> DJ playing duck, duck, goose in an empty brothel with a <laughs> gaggle of children. <laughs> we caught up over a beer while DJ mothered from afar, squawking in Thai when the kids got out of line. I'd been teaching in the country for months and could barely manage a full sentence. He'd become fluent in less than a year, a linguistic miracle fueled by his lust for Thai women. <laughs> the brothels were his school. As he was explaining that I'd have to get Mama Blade's permission to stay in the house, she came in like a maelstrom. The kids scattered and settled into quiet play. DJ sprung up and bowed. I followed. They conferred in Thai as she eyed me with equal parts suspicion and lust. I would have been flattered if I wasn't so intimidated. <laughs> like most Thai women, she was short, but the similarities ended there. She was built like a barrel and covered in tattoos and scars, obviously self-inflicted. I'd just broken up with a cutter, and Mama Blade had the same pattern of pain, a telltale ladder of scars up her left arm that told me two things. She was right-handed, and she was suffering. After a long few minutes, she turned to me with demure eyes and broken English. You stay here, you stay in my room, okay? <laughs> <laughs> she bowed, I bowed back, and she left. DJ looked nervous, which made me nervous. I'd never known him to be anything but bold to a fault. Dude, you gotta stay here. <laughs> I knew where he was going with this. Face is everything in Thai culture, as in losing face and saving face. If I didn't stay after DJ asked for permission, 
we would both lose face, which I didn't care about since I lived 200 miles away, but DJ would face social consequences. I would have felt pressured, hoodwinked, but the truth is, I was going to stay anyway. I was bored and reckless, a collector of stories and proud drunk. One by one, the girls came back from their day dates to collect their children and deposit them with various baby daddies. As the kids disappeared, DJ and I got down to drinking, and the night descended into a waterfall of whiskey. DJ was flush with student loan money and feeling generous. The streets were crawling with old American and British men, sex pats. Our youth and DJ's bar tab ensured our popularity with the girls, but DJ was taken and I made it clear I wasn't interested. I have boundaries regarding prostitutes that revolve mostly around pride and was worried that Mama Blade would mince my balls if I shacked up with one of her girls. Mama Blade joined in and matched us drink for drink and then some. I barely made it up the stairs as she led me to her room, which was palatial by my standards. Huge TV, big cozy bed, and a full bar. I'd spent a month sleeping on the floor of my classroom until I had enough money for my own place, which was still a hovel compared to her plush digs. She actually tucked me in. <laughs> <laughs> she brought me a beer and a water and an offer. You want lady? You want movie? You want hamburger? <laughs> 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 lady, eh, pass. It felt like a trap. Movie? Yes! I hadn't seen a TV, much less a movie, in months. Hamburger? Oh my god, yes! <laughs> I'd been living off of market food and crappy school lunches of oily rice and hairy pork. She showed me how to use the remote, and I was a half an hour into the newest Star Wars in English <laughs> when she came back with a double bacon cheeseburger. I could have wept. I knew then how powerful she was. <laughs> Anyone that could find a real double bacon cheeseburger in Thailand at 3 a.m. had to know people in high places. And then she was gone. She had to go to work. I didn't even want to know what that meant for a drunk mama-san with a huge knife at 4 a.m. We started drinking early the next day. It was one of the girls' birthdays, which meant more whiskey and uh, karaoke. <laughs> karaoke is huge in Thailand. The school I taught at literally offered a karaoke class in lieu of gym for those students who had given up on athleticism to pursue <laughs> pop star dreams. <laughs> but I couldn't really enjoy myself. I kept waiting to be dragged upstairs and ravaged like some helpless sex puppy. <laughs> Mama Blade had been so nice to me. Like, really nice. Turns out, that would have been preferable to the scene that actually played out. Just as I was starting to see double, she grabbed my hand. Okay, we go now. <laughs> she led me to her motorcycle, a big, Boss Harley, the kind you'd find straddled by men with sleeveless jean jackets and names like box cutter and hog balls. <laughs> I wanted to scream, go where? I'm not getting on that thing with you. You're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but as was often the case in those days, common sense lay somewhere at the bottom of a bottle. If I had been driving and she was less terrifying, it, it would have almost been romantic. <laughs> Cruising along the coast as the sun sets over the Gulf of Thailand, I gripped her waist in fear, <laughs> holding on for dear life as she whipped around curves at 80 miles an hour. It was the beginning of a long night of emasculation. <laughs> 
As night fell, we came up on a police roadblock, not uncommon in this part of the country. She slowed down, and as the two officers approached, she ripped her helmet off and fucking laid into them. I didn't understand a word, but she was pissed. And they were fucking scared! <laughs> they backed away, bowed, and sent us on our way! I thought, sure, the roadblock was this sex puppy's way out. <laughs> She'd get arrested, and I could go home. No, it turns out I'm riding with the Tony fucking Soprano of Southern Thailand. <laughs> I'd like to say that she was gentle. <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> She rode me like an alabaster pony <laughs> while her mood music of choice played on Seal's Greatest Hits. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing worse than fucking someone you don't want to is having to do it while Seal is playing. I gave my penis a little pep talk. Thought of porn stars, celebrities, wild orgies, anything to keep it up. Just do me this one solid buddy and I'll start treating you better. I'll buy the good lotion. No more bad decisions, I swear. <laughs> then, Kiss from a Rose came on. And I did what any scared little trophy fuck under a drunk, sweaty, naked mob boss would do. I faked an orgasm. <laughs> 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 Look, sometimes men do it too. <laughs> yeah. I braced myself for the cuddling, but she had to go. She dropped me off at the White Lily, and then it was back to work, off to terrify the masses. I made my excuses the next morning and left a day early. DJ had gotten in a fight with his hooker girlfriend and decided to follow me north. Mama Blade looked sad as she dropped us at the train station. We parted ways with a hug and a bow. She gave me a tiny photo of herself. The ties passed them out like business cards. She pointed at the photo and spoke a few words to DJ. When I asked for a translation, he said that I should show the photo if I ever got into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the next weekend, DJ was up to his old tricks. He had grabbed someone's girlfriend in the club, and I came out of the bathroom to find him surrounded by five angry men who were ready to kick my ass just for being with him. They closed in as I pictured the onslaught of sweet Thai kickboxing moves I was sure they would pummel me with when DJ turned to me. The photo, dude! Show the photo! <laughs> I pulled it out and bore it like a cross at a vampire. DJ yelled at them, pointing at me in the photo. The lead guy went white as a ghost, and all five bowed and turned away. I couldn't fucking believe it! Mama Blade had saved us! Drunk and reeling with adrenaline, I yelled as they walked away. That's right! You better walk away! I'm her bitch, man! Edward Duell!